Hi, and welcome to our McKinney Vento 101. This is the TEA Texas Education for Homeless Children and Youth Techie Program. And we are so excited to dive into McKinney Vento 101. I will be your presenter. My name is Desiree Veramontes. I am the Techie State Coordinator, a part of the highly mobile and at-risk student programs here at TEA. And you can reach me at 512-463-8774. And my email is desiree.veramontes at tea.texas.gov. You can access resources on our webpage, um, recordings that we have, slide postings, ask questions. So just super excited for you guys to be here with me today. And let's dive in and take a look. So our objectives and outline is to review the key requirements of the McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act and the roles and responsibilities of school districts and open enrollment charter schools to support students experiencing homelessness. We're going to take a look at the McKinney-Vento definition and data, McKinney-Vento requirement for all LEAs, McKinney-Vento implementation, identification, enrollment, and services, as well as Techie program updates and resources. McKinney-Vento Act refers to the federal McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act for Texas Education for Homeless Children and Youth Program. This refers to the Texas McKinney-Vento Program, also known as Techie. Uh, students experiencing homelessness refers to McKinney-Vento eligible students and our LEAs, our local education agencies, this refers to Texas public schools and open enrollment charter schools. McKinney-Vento definitions and requirements. The McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act ensures that students have immediate and equal access to public education, that LEAs review and revise policies to remove barriers to school enrollment and retention of homeless children and youth. McKinney-Vento defines enrollment as attending classes and participating fully in school activities. This can be found in the ESSA, the Every Student Succeeds Act um, of 2015. So who is residents, including children and youth that share the housing of other persons due to the loss of housing, economic hardship, or a similar reason. Sometimes this can also be referred to as doubled up or as couch surfing. This can be living in motels, hotels, trailer parks, campgrounds due to the lack of alternative adequate accommodations, living in emergency or transitional shelters, um, also living in a public or private place not designated for or ordinarily used as a regular sleeping accommodation for human beings. In looking at this, you're also considering your students and families that live in cars, parks, public spaces, abandoned buildings, substandard housing. This could include um, like a garage or Maybe there was a natural disaster that hit and it impacted the, the water or it impacted the electricity, something that makes it substandard, bus or train stations or a similar setting, migratory children living in the above circumstances, as well as unaccompanied youth, which is a special designation within the McKinney-Vento Act that includes a homeless child or youth not in the physical custody of a parent or guardian. McKinney-Vento requirements for all LEAs. So the first requirement, this is very pivotal, is to appoint a local McKinney-Vento homeless liaison and ensure they have the capacity to carry out the duties listed in the statute. And that McKinney-Vento liaison identifies students experiencing homelessness, enrolls students experiencing homelessness immediately, even without required records, makes student records available in a timely manner, and really does um, encompass providing all wraparound services to students experiencing homelessness that are comparable to those offered to other students. A couple of key questions to think about for these requirements for all LEAs. Do you know who is your local McKinney-Vento liaison? How does your McKinney-Vento liaison inform LEA and campus staff of their McKinney-Vento liaison duties to support students experiencing homelessness? And do they provide annual McKinney-Vento training to LEA and campus staff? 
Having a process to disseminate McKinney-Vento program information and resources is vital, as well as listing contact information, program services, and referral process on a McKinney-Vento website for each LEA. Really looking from the McKinney-Vento liaison at your McKinney-Vento requirements, review and revise policies that may act as barriers to the enrollment of students experiencing homelessness. Continue the student's education in their school of origin. Provide school of origin transportation if it is requested by a parent, guardian, or unaccompanied youth and is in the best interest of the student. Provide written notice to parents, guardians, and unaccompanied youth related to the appeals process if the LEA sends a student to a school other than the school requested. So a couple of questions to consider when you're looking at these requirements. Does your LEA review and revise LEA and campus policies to remove barriers and ensure immediate enrollment and McKinney-Vento identification? When and how often does this process occur? Is this every time a student is enrolling in the school district, they fill out a student residency questionnaire and we'll get into the, the details of a student residency questionnaire a little bit later. And also how are new or revised policies communicated to LEA and campus staff consideration that there is the McKinney-Vento Act, there's also state laws, and you have your local laws that determine when your LEA um, reviews and assists students experiencing homelessness, and it impacts the McKinney-Vento program services overall. So let's look at some of the data across the state of Texas. It is really important to review student data to see what the demographics look like within your LEA, how your students are doing academically, to help inform McKinney-Vento program implementation. So let's take a look. Here's a look at the statewide identification of students experiencing homelessness. Typically, identification can increase during events like natural disasters, which can displace families. Recently, we have seen a decrease in identification due to COVID-19. But we also know that overall enrollment drops, so it's important to look at the percentage of students as part of the whole state population. As you can see in this last um, data year that we have available, 22-23, there is 114,536 students. And so our identification is up um, in this post-COVID look at it. In 2018-2019 was the last year that we had students at 114,000 in the state. And then you can see as you look at 2019 through 2022, that dip in identification due to COVID-19 and the drop in enrollment across the state overall. Statewide data, homeless student identification. This is a look at the percentage of homeless students as part of the total Texas student population. We've seen a decrease in identification over the last couple of years. Although student enrollment has recently decreased, we are still identifying a smaller percentage of homeless students than we were before. Texas has received grants in response to COVID-19 that provide support for schools to increase homeless student identification. And we have started to see an increase um, from the use of those funds and helping to identify and enroll students that are experiencing homelessness. And looking at the 2019 through 22 statewide homeless data by living situation, you can see that the majority of our students across our state really hover at this 75, 77% living doubled up. And then for shelters, we have 9%, very steady in our shelter um, percentage across the state. And then hotel motel has seen a fluctuation across the years from 7% up to 9%, as well as a dip in unsheltered, and that could just be um, identification practices, but 7%, 8%, and down to 5%. So in looking at special programs and homeless student data, doubled up students are the most common situation, but also the most difficult to identify. So TEA data that is submitted to the US Department of Education annually, there may be an under identification of migrant students. You can see that it's 1%, um, could be larger. It is larger across other states in the nation. For special education numbers, um, they hover between 14 and 16%, and then English learners, 18 to 20% across the state. Texas high school graduation data, very exciting. We have the fourth highest homeless student graduation rate in the United States. 
Compared to other state leaders, we have much larger homeless student population and compared to similarly sized states, we lead by double digit percentage points. So in smaller states, looking at a population of around like 819, Nevada has 86% of a graduation rate. Kentucky is 83% with 1,500. And then when you dive into those larger states and look at our um, very consistent around 80%, we have 23,000, um, which is much larger in our 1,247 school districts across the state. California's percentage is 70% um, with a 34,470 population within their state. And then New York is graduation rate is 59% with a population of around 8,000. Unaccompanied youth includes a homeless child or youth not in the physical custody of a parent or guardian and TEA data that is submitted to the US Department of Education annually. And looking at these numbers, there is 15% in the 2018 2019 school year and then dipped in 2019 2020 to 13.7% and is back on the rise of identification to 14.8%, which makes up about 17,000 students, 15,000 students, 13,000 students, respectively, for the school year. Here is each living situation as a percentage of the statewide homeless student population. Unaccompanied youth data reflected the population exactly in 2021, which is different from the past few years. Doing more data analysis and taking a deeper dive after noticing the pattern of living situations really is very eye-opening when you are um, doing a needs assessment or data analysis of your LEA uh, to assist in broadening how you do your identification practices and, and making sure that you have a good, strong um, look across all the different living situations and you're identifying all students that in your area could be doubled up, living in a shelter, hotel, motel, or unsheltered. We have this infographic um, that has the 2020-2021 data on our TEA webpage. The link is provided as a resource document on the webpage. And the highlight um, on this infographic, it's a great one pager to use when you're doing uh, trainings across your school district, really looking at the identification of the living situation, identification for other special populations, as well as graduation data. Let's take a look at McKinney Vento liaison duties just a little bit deeper. So McKinney Vento liaisons facilitate identification of students experiencing homelessness by providing identification procedures training of LEA staff, awareness materials, and they collaborate with the community. It's a very large job for one personnel and it's a, a very robust task. So in looking at these duties, this is everything that a McKinney-Vento liaison must ensure for students that are experiencing homelessness. Are they identified collaboratively with school personnel, other organizations and agencies? So in working with a local shelter, or working with local motels to help in the assistance of that, as well as partnering with key personnel within your school district, such as the registrar, to have strong procedures and identification practices um, as students are enrolling in your LEA. Are they enrolled and provided equitable access to succeed in school? Really looking at everything that can be offered as a wraparound service to make sure that students are receiving um, educational services for which they're eligible and also succeeding at a very high level to continue to be promoted every single school year. McKinney Vento liaisons also ensure that they receive referrals for medical, dental, mental health, housing services, and other appropriate services and includes the family experiencing homelessness. It's very helpful if you have um, reached out to your network of support of anybody around your area that provides medical, dental, mental health, housing services, looking at Section 8 housing opportunities, um, as well as additional housing options that there are to assist your families. A list of those resources provided on your website can be very instrumental in helping um, families and students experiencing homelessness. So also ensure that you're, you have posters that are posted in locations frequented by students, parents, guardians, and unaccompanied youth. This could be in the opening of all of your LEAs, like as you walk into the building, this could be within the, the registrar's office or however students are enrolling at your LEA. 
Um, and keeping in mind that enrollment disputes are mediated in accordance with the requirements of the McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act and are very much assisted by the McKinney-Vento Homeless Liaison in helping them with those enrollment disputes. Parents, guardians, and unaccompanied youth are informed of all transportation services that are available, including school of origin transportation. Keep in mind that for a dispute, just want to do a little reminder here, that a dispute is for student eligibility for McKinney-Vento school selection or student enrollment under the McKinney-Vento Act. Liaisons ensure that school personnel receive professional development and other support to ensure identification of McKinney-Vento eligible students. Parents or guardians of students experiencing homelessness are informed of the educational opportunities available to their students and provided opportunities to participate in their students' education. So having some kind of process in place, whether it is sending emails to the families or facilitating those conversations with their teachers or the administrative staff to make sure that they are having a very smooth start to their school year and parents understand how they can access report cards, um, remind however your district communicates with parents and students to make sure that they they feel involved in what's happening in their students' academic career. The McKinney Vento Liaison also ensures that unaccompanied homeless youth are enrolled in school, have opportunities to meet the same state academic standards as housed students, and are informed of their independent status for the purpose of the free application for federal student aid. This is for seniors that are identified as both homeless and an unaccompanied youth. There is a ver there is a sample verification letter on the McKinney Vento Touchy website for TEA. If you want to take a look at that and make sure you're providing this um, federally required verification letter for our seniors as they go into their post secondary opportunities. So all LEAs must designate a McKinney Vento liaison to carry out the duties listed in the federal McKinney Vento Act. These include updating the McKinney Vento liaison's contact information and Ask Ted, and this should be reviewed every single year to make sure that it's up to date. Districts submit their liaison information to TEA through district's Ask Ted administrator. And for charter schools, you submit your liaison information to the charter school division at TEA directly. You can call the phone number, the 512-463-9575 or charterschools at tea.texas.gov. Just going to take a moment here to remind you of some of the stuff. So we will post this recording on our website. Hopefully that's the way that you accessed it, as well as the slide deck that we are going over in this presentation. Let's dive into McKinney-Vento identification, enrollment, and services. McKinney-Vento student identification, LEAs should have processes and strategies in place to identify students experiencing homelessness. Upon enrollment, that would be your student residency questionnaire, strong processes with your registrars and your PEMS coding. Um, anytime during the school year, so anytime a student is enrolling in the school year, that enrollment packet and having that student residency questionnaire part of that, and in the event of a natural disaster. If there was a, a fire that hit an apartment complex or a tornado that, that ripped through the state, um, winter storm as we've been experiencing, just making sure that you have those processes and strategies in place to help any students that may experiencing homelessness um, due to unforeseen circumstances throughout the school year. Students experiencing homelessness cannot be identified for McKinney-Vento program services if they are not enrolled in school. So providing immediate enrollment and doing that determination of McKinney-Vento eligibility really gets them to the assessment of services and access to services. Students experiencing homelessness have the right to immediate school enrollment. What does this look like? So a student experiencing homelessness may be lacking paperwork normally required for enrollment and really doing a provisional enrollment without immunizations or birth certificates. Even if you have missed an application or enrollment deadline during any period of homelessness, really broadening and helping students um, experiencing homelessness get immediate enrollment into the school. Provisional enrollment for all students. So a parent or legal guardian who's enrolling the student has up to 30 days from the date of enrollment to provide proof of the student's identity. Acceptable documentation is included on this list. Birth certificate, passport, driver's license, school ID or report card, military ID, church baptismal records, 
keeping in mind any of the documents in the list is acceptable for proof of identity. Statement of the child's date of birth issued for school admission purposes by Texas Vital Statistics, hospital birth record, adoption record, church baptismal record, any other legal document that establishes identity as long as there is a signed note explaining why the person is unable to produce a certified copy of the birth certificate. This is outlined in TEA Student Attendance Accounting Handbook, Section 3.33, Documentation of Identity and Age, found on page 47. And looking at that can be really, really helpful um, for a lot of different attendance purposes and helping students experiencing homelessness. This slide references uh, 46 student attendance accounting handbook. So when a student moves from one Texas public school district or charter school to another, the student record must be transferred via T-REX within 10 working days of receiving a request. If a school district or an open enrollment charter school does not receive the required information within 10 working days, they may report the non-compliant district or charter school to the division responsible for T-REX support at TEA. So keep that in mind. There's a 10-day window in receiving those requests. And a lot of times that T-REX request is going to provide the Texas unique ID, the date of birth, current grade level, a copy of the birth certificate, social security number, immunization information. So very important to get that information from the T-REX request. Provisional enrollment with incomplete immunizations. Keep in mind students experiencing homelessness shall be admitted provisionally for 30 business days if acceptable evidence of immunizations is not available. If a student needs to obtain immunizations, the enrolling school must refer the parent or guardian to the county health authority, community health providers, or other community resources available that can assist the family to obtain the required immunizations. Pages 50 to 51 of the Student Attendance Accounting Handbook states, a student shall be provisionally enrolled if they have begun the required immunization series. A homeless student or a student who is in foster care shall be admitted temporarily for 30 days if acceptable evidence of vaccination is not available. So keep in mind that referral um, component, which is a McKinney-Vento liaison required duty in conjunction with working with like the nursing department, um, or nurses within that LEA or that campus really thinking about strong procedural practices that when a student is enrolling and they don't have the proper immunization, that the nurse or the McKinney-Vento liaison is quickly providing local health authority, community health providers, or other community resources so that they can obtain that immunization. Immunization Provisional Enrollment Resource. So the Texas Department of State Health Services Immunization Unit provides this provisional enrollment for students, for students experiencing homelessness, that they shall be admitted provisionally for 30 business days if acceptable evidence of immunization is not available. If a student needs to obtain immunizations, the enrolling school must refer the parent or guardian to the county health authority, community health providers, or other community resources available that it consists that can assist the family to obtaining the required immunizations. Oftentimes in working as a McKinney-Vento liaison, working with that nurse and letting them know, we contacted the family, we gave these referral um, to the health providers in the area, they have an appointment, can really help open up that communication and let the parent know um, this may be a little past the window or the nurse knows this may be a little past the window, but there is an appointment and they're going to get there. can be really helpful in doing that. State district selection provision. So in Texas, we have a state district selection provision. It's the Texas Education Code 25.001B5. If a family is homeless, they can select to enroll in any district in the state. Students experiencing homelessness would be enrolling under the state provision. The mckinney Vento liaison will assist in selecting the campus that best meets the needs of students experiencing homelessness. mckinney Vento transportation does not apply in this state-specific scenario. So if a parent wants to enroll their child in another school district and they stress that the McKinney-Vento liaison will work with the family to determine the campus that best meets the needs of the student and the family. So really looking at the entire school district and what opportunities are available to go to different campuses across that school district that's in the best interest of the family and student as well as the school district being able to accommodate that. We're going through so much great contact very, very quickly. Next, we're gonna roll into determining eligibility. 
So in determining eligibility, this is the SRQ that I was talking about. So in looking at the student residency questionnaire, the SRQ is a recommended best practice to assist with identification of students experiencing homelessness. This tool is to assist with identification for families to discreetly identify. Most of the time inside of your LEA, this would be a part of your enrollment paperwork. The students fill out that student residency questionnaire. You can find a sample of a student residency questionnaire on our Techy website, um, as well as a process for the McKinney-Bento liaison themselves. An intake form is very, very helpful in making sure that you're meeting all of those McKinney-Bento liaison duty requirements. The intake form is to clarify responses on the student residency questionnaire to determine identification and program services. Also, the intake form is a great tool to ensure that all eligible students in a family are identified, as well as receiving all of the services and benefits of the school district and surrounding community. So in the sample student residency questionnaire, the local liaison must identify all eligible students by surveying housing status for students every school year. The SRQ is a recommended best practice to assist with the identification of students experiencing homelessness. Utilization of the SRQ provides an audible and systematic process to determine McKinney-Vento eligibility. Using a student residency questionnaire or other form of auditable documentation really helps make sure that you're looking at McKinney-Vento eligibility and looking at it on a case-by-case -case basis, considering the unique circumstances of each student and keeping that, that conversation and confidentiality going um, so that they are able to do it in a very discreet way and then connect with the McKinney-Vento liaison for the determination. So SRQ and intake process assessing McKinney-Vento eligibility, really mapping out a timeline and living situation to determine McKinney-Vento eligibility. Not all families living in a hotel would be considered homeless. Um, sometimes you could have somebody that's living in a hotel and they're building a house, so they would not qualify under McKinney-Vento. So not all families that are living in a doubled up living situation would be considered homeless either. You could have just moved into town and gotten a job and you're trying to secure housing. So sometimes you could be in a doubled up living situation um, due to something that is completely not giving to that economic hardship and financial um, instability. So some of the questions to look at this is once the family or unaccompanied youth has completed an SRQ, the liaison will proceed with determining eligibility by assessing the following. So these are a few really good key questions to be asking as you're doing that intake. What is the family's or unaccompanied use current living situation? Is it a temporary living situation due to a recent loss of housing or economic hardship? Is the housing, is it fixed, regular, and adequate? Is the family or unaccompanied youth living in a hotel, shelter, unsheltered, or doubled up living situation? Sample intake form, really, this is a, a sample, take it, adapt it to your school district and your needs for all the different things that are offered within your school different district. Um, a lot of that is on this sample intake form are federal requirements that are already provided. And so looking at another identification strategy to complement the SRQ form, use the intake form to clarify responses on the SRQ to determine identification and program services. The intake form is a great tool to ensure that all eligible students in a family are identified. Um, there are some school districts that make their intake form an online process or an electronic process so that they're able to feed that information into a spreadsheet and get that data going. Um, there's many different ways to approach this and would love to hear what you guys are doing across the state as far as your SRQ and intake process. The second page of the intake form assists with reviewing and documenting the services provided to the student, such as school of origin transportation, free lunch program. SRQs along with intake forms are auditable documentation of identification or disqualification of McKinney-Vento program services. This sample form, again, can be adapted to fit your LEA's needs. Make sure that you're documenting the non-qualification criteria on your intake notes for why a student or family um, may not qualify. Events that may lead to a loss of housing. Many families experiencing homelessness because of a major life event, which could lead to a situation, poverty. So unemployment, divorce, domestic abuse, medical expenses, natural disasters such as winter storms, tornadoes, floods, fires, hurricanes, 
And in Texas, we experience all these extreme weather events, especially after the last few years. Identification of unaccompanied homeless youth includes a homeless child or youth not in the physical custody of her parent or guardian. These are often secondary students, but not always. Um, so you could have a family where you had a parent recently pass away and all of the students are now become unaccompanied because they're in between that guardianship. You could also have um, a student that identifies as an unaccompanied youth uh, in their secondary years. And then elementary and middle school students can be considered unaccompanied youth as well. Really look at each situation on a case by case basis, review their living situation and nighttime residency. Students must be both unaccompanied and experiencing homelessness to qualify as an unaccompanied homeless youth. Let's look at student coding, so instrumental um, in getting all of those services. So McKinney Vento student coding. Student eligibility for McKinney Vento services should be assessed annually. McKinney Vento eligible students should be coded at the time of identification. Identification and coding is for the current school year and McKinney Vento coding does not carry over from year to year. So a family could be in a continued state of homelessness for many years but the assessment of their living situation under McKinney Mental Law needs to happen every single year. The TSDS PEMS homeless status codes. Um, in our codes, we have the same information that we just went over. When a student is not homeless, they would be a zero. If they are in a homeless living situation, two would be for doubled up, three is unsheltered. Four is motel or hotel, and five is living in a, in a shelter. So a shelter that's defined as a supervised, publicly or privately operated facility designed to provide temporary living accommodations. TSDS PEMS unaccompanied youth code, so this would be a separate code, and three would be if the student does live in the physical custody of a parent or legal guardian, they would be a three or if they are not in the physical custody of a parent or guardian, they would be considered an unaccompanied youth, and this would be a four. This is for, this coding in particular is for homeless students only. There is no unaccompanied minor code. Make sure you have a process to review that they have a code for if they are an unaccompanied homeless youth. So that way you know um, which of your students within your homeless population are unaccompanied youth. Notification of McKinney-Vento student eligibility. McKinney-Vento liaison should implement processes and procedures to ensure all identified McKinney-Vento students have been coded for all appropriate service in a timely manner by providing registrars or other designated contacts and email notification with the appropriate homeless status and at-risk indicator code in the TSDS PEMS, informing designated food services contact to code all eligible students for free meal status. As a McKinney Vento liaison, you can do this in one step. After you finish the identification, you can send out that approval email to registrars and food services to make sure they are all coded and receiving the appropriate um, services underneath that, as well as doing a touch base with your families and making sure like, hey, just wanted to follow up, make sure that your student is receiving those free meal services or touching base with the unaccompanied youth. Every once in a while that coding can be missed. And so having processes in place where you're checking that data and checking that coding to make sure um, that students are receiving the, the services that they um, have been identified to receive. Reviewing the accuracy of McKitty Vento coding. So again, develop, review, monitor your program reports to ensure accuracy and timely coding of student eligibility criteria, date of quality, qualification, at-risk status, unaccompanied youth status, review McKinney-Vento program reports to monitor student enrollment, coding, and services on a regular basis, develop processes and procedures to address and correct any coding, area, coding errors throughout the school year. Something that was very successful for a lot of McKinney-Vento liaisons, myself and others included, is to really put that into your calendar and map out the times that you're going to be looking at that. Um, a great time to review that data would be ahead of the October snapshot. Um, also having a strong collaboration with the campus registrar or designated staff member and, and review those systems and processes in place to review coding and identify and remedy any coding errors. 
um, really need to ensure to code McKinney Vento eligible students in a timely manner so they can have access to services immediately, such as nutritional services. Take a moment to pause to process. And ready to dive into McKinney Vento transportation. This is a very unique aspect to the McKinney Vento Act and transportation requirements for all LEAs. Transportation must be provided to and from the school of origin at the request of the parent or guardian, or in the case of an unaccompanied youth, at the request of the local liaison. Students experiencing homelessness are eligible for school of origin transportation. Collaboration must occur between the LEAs to arrange transportation. LEAs must agree on a method to share the responsibilities and costs. So for instance, this could be school district A is doing the AM transportation um, for that shared responsibility and school district B is taking the PM. Or you could have a situation where um, one of the school districts is reimbursing if you're doing both AM and PM transportation, really working with your school transportation department to ensure that best practices and being fiscally responsible are instrumental in helping with the transportation requirements of McKinney-Vento for students experiencing homelessness. What is the best interest determination? So when you're determining a best interest, the local education agency shall presume that keeping a child or youth in their school of origin is in the child's or youth's best interest, except when doing so is contrary to the request of the parent, guardian, or unaccompanied youth. Keep in mind that school of origin transportation has to be requested by the student, parent, or guardian. Consider student-centered factors related to the child or youth's best interest, including factors related to the impact of mobility on achievement, education, health, and safety, giving priority to the request of the parent or guardian or an accompanied youth. Really presuming that keeping that child in the school of origin, but really considering those student-centered factors. So if you had a pre-K student and let's say the travel time was two hours, that may not be a safe or, or um, best interest for that student. Whereas if you're looking at a secondary student who's in their sophomore or junior year trying to complete those credits, that would be in the best interest and changing schools would be very detrimental to their, their transcript and their academic career. So really considering those student-centered factors with the student and family as you go through um, this student, parent, or family decision of requesting that school of origin transportation. Duration of school of origin rights. Homeless children and youth have the right to attend their school of origin for the duration of homelessness. So this is what I had said earlier. So there could be many years of continued state of homelessness, but this is something that we look at every single school year to see what their current living situation is at that time of identification every year. In any case in which a family becomes homeless between academic years or during an academic year. For the remainder of the academic year, if the child or youth becomes permanently housed during an academic year. So if they are identified living in a shelter or living in their car at the very beginning of the school year, it's important to keep in mind that they are eligible for McKinney Vento services and school of origin from the time of their identification throughout the end of that school year. School of origin considerations. So really thinking about, like I mentioned before with the pre-K student in two hours, like the travel time, the age of the student, the time of the school year, personal safety issues. Um, if looking at and doing that best interest conversation with the, the student or the family or guardian, really looking at, okay, it's about to be December, we're doing, you know, if we can do school of origin transportation so the student can finish their credits at semester and then transition into that school, if that's going to be in the best interest of the student, really taking all of those into consideration when you're doing those, those arrangements um, with the family for school of origin transportation. LEA strategies to support school of origin services. So develop LEA policies and procedures to support implementation of school of origin transportation services. Partner with labor, um, neighboring LEAs to coordinate out of district transportation services. Really having a strong partnership in the network of school districts that you are most often doing the transportation can be instrumental in helping um, really get school of origin transportation going and consistently um, in play. 
really monitor transportation services regularly to ensure continuity of services. So in working with any highly mobile um, group of students, especially students experiencing homelessness, they could have moved. And so always checking in on, do we need to update the address? Do we need to put another transportation request um, to ensure not only for your transportation department, but also for the student and family that they're getting the school of origin transportation um, in a timely and efficient manner. Also providing busing information and any new student or family contact information to the appropriate campus and LEA contacts. So really communicating that they're receiving that school of origin transportation. There is a sample school of origin transportation. Um, it was designed to serve as a written communication between the McKinney Vento liaison and the eligible McKinney Vento family. This provides a, a resource link that's on our website website and this is um, this is a resource that had been requested from the field and it's very important so really keeping in mind that you have the student information the busing information um, no call guidance and so if they don't utilize the transportation for a certain amount of days then the transportation will be discontinued you have to start the process over again McKinney Vento and transportation program contact information um, oftentimes school districts will have folks that are able to get in touch with the transportation personnel much more quickly. So making sure that you have both of those phone numbers available and also the other, if you're partnering with another school district, their school district contact information is on there to assist that student and family and having access to all the information that they need for their student that is being transported for school of origin. Post-secondary support. So McKinney-Vento post-secondary planning and support. Really looking at um, these requirements of the law, school counselors are your instrumental partner as the McKinney-Vento liaison, and they must assist students experiencing homelessness with college preparation and readiness. Local liaisons must inform unaccompanied youth about their independent student status on the FAFSA and assist with verification of the status. There's a lot of times where you have the school counselors assisting with this post-secondary and the McKinney-Vento liaison, and so having a strong partnership of the explanation of the verification letter and who's going to walk the student through the FAFSA can be very, very helpful in um, what the students are looking at. So FAFSA and McKinney-Vento, the new one was released. This uh, was released later than it normally has been released, um, January, February of this year. So really looking at these questions, am I a dependent or independent when I fill out the FAFSA form? This could be directly found at studentaid.gov, the document that's on the right. So at any time on or after July 1st, 2022, were you determined to be an unaccompanied youth who was homeless or were self-supporting and at risk of being homeless as determined by, this could be determined by the high school or district homeless liaison, the director of an emergency shelter or transitional housing program funded by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, commonly known as HUD, this could be the director of a runaway or homeless youth basic center or transitional living program. So there's a lot of different points of contact that can provide this verification for the FAFSA um, that is very, very helpful in helping that student. So if a student responds yes to any of the questions that are on um, their FAFSA form, they are considered to be an independent student and don't have to provide information about their parents. So remember, independent student, unaccompanied youth, um, think of them as synonyms, they go together. On the FAFSA form, they're considered an independent student. For the purposes of McKinney-Vento, they're considered an unaccompanied youth. So, and looking at these notes from questions 55 through 57, if they answer yes, you have received a determination at any time on or after that July 1st, 2022 date that you were an unaccompanied youth who was homeless or at risk of being homeless. And really going back to that definition that homeless means a lack of fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime housing. You may have been homeless if you're living in shelters, parks, motels, hotels, public spaces, campgrounds, cars, abandoned buildings um, due to economic hardship or financial difficulty. And you're also an unaccompanied, meaning that you are not living in the physical custody of your parent or guardian. This, we have a sample FAFSA verification form on the Techy website. This verification letter is for unaccompanied homeless youth for the purposes of federal financial aid, signed by the McKinney-Vento liaison and sent in. 
with the new federal requirements, this letter is only required to be submitted for the first time that you're entering into higher education. Just take a moment, pause to process before we delve into dispute resolution. Dispute resolution. So if the LEA has made a determination regarding student eligibility for McKinney-Vento, student enrollment, eligibility, or school selection that the parent or guardian or unaccompanied homeless youth disagrees with, they may dispute the determination. Only three items can be disputed under McKinney-Vento, eligibility, enrollment, and school selection. It's a three-tiered process, so each LEA has local policies and procedures to address disputes or complaints, and it first goes to the McKinney-Vento liaison that will then help the student or family walk through the dispute resolution process with their LEA or campus leadership. And then step three would be it goes to the superintendent or the school board for a final determination for your LEA. McKinney-Vento liaison must provide the parent, guardian, or unaccompanied youth a written notice that includes an explanation of the decision regarding eligibility, school selection, or enrollment, and the right of the parent, guardian, or unaccompanied youth to appeal or dispute the decision with the McKinney-Vento liaison guiding and assisting that student and family through that grievance process for their LEA. Once the enrollment decision is made, the LEA's McKinney-Vento liaison will ensure that the notice includes an explanation of the reasons for the determination, and includes a description of the appeals process, appeal timelines, and information on how and to whom to appeal the decision, is provided to the parent, guardian, or unaccompanied youth promptly in a way that is understandable. Written notice does not include providing information on a web page. This is something that needs to be meant for the parent or unaccompanied homeless youth specifically um, and needs to be given to them as a formal determination. TA McKinney Vento dispute resolution process and FAQ resources. Um, so this is a screenshot of our TEA website where you can find more information on the McKinney Vento dispute process. If a dispute is not resolved locally, a complaint may then be filed with TEA. Only disputes that have gone through all three levels of the local dispute process will be reviewed by TEA and TEA's decision regarding McKinney Vento disputes are final. So there is um, a very helpful resource from the Texas Association of School Boards posted on our TEA website and provided um, through our regional McKinney-Vento liaisons at your ESCs. So looking at ESC, um, looking at Exhibit A, this is form is for a parent, guardian, or unaccompanied youth to file a formal dispute of the district's decision regarding student eligibility, school selection, or student enrollment. Remember, those are the three things that can be disputed under the McKinney-Vento Act. Exhibit B is information for district staff on the dispute resolution process and it also has a frequently asked questions. It's a very helpful document in navigating um, the local grievance process. So I encourage you to take a, um, use that QR code to get to this resource. So let's look at most, most complaints don't trigger the formal complaints process. TE provides supports for ESCs to, revolve situa to resolve situations. Within every one of your um, region service centers, there is technical assistance that's provided from your ESC McKinney-Vento liaison that can help look through um, and help you guide you through what would be something that needs to be a formal complaint process or something that just needs to be explained and, and iterated on and talked through. Um, the formal complaints process has um, a few key steps. So one, TEA complaints sends notification and details of the complaint to the TECHI program. The TECHI meets with the ESC McKinney Vento liaison to review the complaint. ESC coordinates with the LEA to determine if the complaint has gone through all three levels of dispute resolution or the local complaints process. TECHI informs TEA complaints within 10 business days if an investigation will be conducted. TEA complaints responds to the submitter. And then Techie provides ESC any additional support needed to resolve the complaint. 
So TEA investigation process, Techie will notify the charter liaison and request dispute resolution documents from the district to be submitted in five business days. Document documentation includes SRQ, intake form, documentation of services that were provided, registration documents, et cetera, dispute resolution documents provided and or submitted from the LEA, district dispute complaints policy, historical documents. Um, this could be the previous year's SRQs. And then TEA will make a determination within 20 business days. TEA legal department provides counsel once determination has been reached. So give you guys a moment to process the dispute resolution and really think through um, what are strong program procedures and policies that you can have in place and also building that toolkit of having that printed out. So as you're going through your school year, um, you are ready to help a student or family if they do want to go through that process. And also have that ESC McKinney Vento liaison phone number handy to kind of walk through um, different aspects of the McKinney Vento program to really help assist our students experiencing homelessness. Here are some program resources that can be found um, on our webpage. So we're going to have the webinar recording and the slide deck, sample student residency questionnaire, sample intake form, immunization flow chart, sample transportation letter, dispute resolution resources, posters, and infographics can all be found um, on our website. McKinney Vento poster updates. So the ESC McKinney Vento liaisons will be distributing the posters to every LEA in their region. For additional poster requests, contact your regional McKinney Vento liaison. McKinney Vento requirement is a public notice of educational rights of homeless children and youth that's disseminated in locations frequented by parents or guardians of such children and youth and unaccompanied youth. So we touched on TECHI program technical assistance process. What does this look like? So as the LEA, you could submit a technical assistance request directly to your ESC technical assistance McKinney Vento liaison to help you with that. Um, the ESC can then submit their questions to TEA for technical assistance. Um, if we receive technical assistance, we will forward them to the ESCs and have you work with that regional McKinney Vento liaison for support. Um, if they have additional questions, they reach back out to us. And so just a very, um, fun process of going through and making sure that everybody is getting the technical assistance and support that they need across the state. So you can find this information. It's posted on our TEA Techie webpage. Um, TEA collaborates with the ESC McKinney Vento liaisons to provide Techie program technical assistance. Future McKinney Vento statewide trainings, technical assistance, and resources are provided by TEA in collaboration with our ESCs. So regions one through 20, and it's also posted on our Techi webpage. So statewide ESC regional McKinney Vento liaison support. So really looking at your ESC as instrumental in providing you professional development, technical assistance, all around um, how do you do professional development for your, for your LEA? What are other liaisons in your area doing? Providing that networking and that opportunity and really working with other liaisons within your region, you can find that within your ESC regional McKinney Vento liaison, like contacting them as a new liaison and saying, hey, I, I would really like to be able to go to some of these regional meetings or networking opportunities for the professional development. Um, and how, how do I communicate technical assistance to do a phone call or an email um, and make sure that you're getting the assistance and the guidance that you need. So just a a minute to process, but let's look at some of the upcoming trainings, coffee chats and office hours. Um, I have it blanked out so you guys have an idea of what a full year of touchy trainings looks like for you. So this is the McKinney Vento 101 that you've been sitting in. And then on Thursday, March 7th, we're gonna have McKinney Vento funding and sustainability. We will have McKinney Vento 201 on April 11th. Um, as well as if you are a sub-grantee for our Touchy Funding or ARP HCY, we have a combined coffee chat. Um, and the next opportunity for that is going to be Thursday, April 18th from 1 to 2.30. And then we also provide office hours. Um, I myself provide office hours. It's a time to come in, ask questions, um, get some guidance, 
and networking. So it's important to sign up for updates, um, really looking at special student populations, so McKinney-Vento Homeless Education, Foster Care and Student Success, At-Risk and Highly Mobile Student Programs Division, Military Connected Students, and we also do um, a highly mobile and at-risk um, webinar, and we have four of those every single year. So signing up for updates is a great way to get all of the information for um, the special student populations and programs that you may be serving. Just wanted to take a moment to thank you guys for attending this session. Um, again, I'm the McKinney-Vento State Coordinator for Texas, and this is my contact information. I will say um, reaching out to the ESC McKinney-Vento liaison can be very pivotal in helping you navigate training and technical assistance support. And you're also welcome to reach out to our homeless education at tea.texas.gov um, with any uh, questions that you may have as well. So just wanna take a couple of minutes to complete um, the survey included below. Your input and feedback are valuable to support the improvement of our current McKinney-Vento training and the development of new McKinney-Vento trainings. Um, so please take out your phones, look at the QR code and fill out our survey. Um, we appreciate and love feedback. It makes all of the future trainings just stronger and better. Let us know what topics of interest that you guys have, um, what you would like to have provided regionally. So. We can take this and in collaboration with our ESC McKinney-Vento liaisons, really provide you with um, robust training opportunities based on your feedback. Thank you everybody for participating in McKinney-Vento 101. Can't wait to read your feedback um, and work with you through um, the next training opportunities. Thank you.